Hello everybody and welcome to my video manual on my, one of my pinhole cameras. I do so many of these for other people's cameras, I should do them for mine too. So, this is the 5119 cameras, the 57 Model 1. This is a 5x7 format sheet film pinhole camera. As you can see, oh well, that's a little bit rougher than it needs to be. As you can see there is the pinhole right there behind the shutter. So. I did forget to write scripts for these. I'm going off memory of the outline, so uh, let's see how well I do. I'm not optimistic. <laughs> no, no, I'll do fine, I'll do fine. All right, so this is, this is five by seven, such a strange format to me. It is, it's just, I don't know why it's harder to use than four by five and eight by 10 to me. But um, at any rate, this is, I, I think a very enjoyable five by seven camera to use with a really distinctive image characteristic. But as, as we do, let's go over the camera's features and then talk about how to use it. So we'll start here on the top of the camera. Here's your bubble level to make sure that your camera is level and your sighting lines. So what you do to sight it up is you stand behind the camera and you look down the lines to sight up your scene. On the front of the camera, we have the shutter assembly. Here's the shutter which is not cooperating again. <laughs> I'm gonna to have to get in there with some, with a screw, with a wrench or pliers. Okay, the, uh, the shutters do take some time to build, to break in and I, I just finished building these half an hour ago. <laughs> so uh, at any rate, um, these have not been broken in just yet and the finish on these is pretty rough. So we're getting there. This is the shutter. This is a 52 millimeter filter thread. So you can screw in filters. You can also uh, use a wide angle lens hood or a lens cap if you want to use a lens cap for your shutter, for instance. So, or for some reason, like if that shutter should get lost or break, you can, you can do that. I don't think this aluminum shutter is gonna break. On this side, we have the tripod socket and we also have all of the camera's data. So if you're a pinhole camera user and you use the very awesome pinhole camera app, which is this one right here, you can enter all of the data into the uh, app and save it. And then you have that data at your uh, disposal. No affiliation to the guy who programmed this. I buy him a cup of coffee every year because I love this app so much. I use it a lot. And uh, this is, going to help you get proper exposures. It will give you the sunny day, sunny 16 pre-reciprocity exposure with your film speed, or you can also use meter readings to get more accurate uh, uh, exposures. Because this camera does have a sunny 16 exposure calculator on it, we'll get to that in a minute and how to use it, but it doesn't have a comprehensive calculator. So, 5119 cameras is the make, the 57 model one is the model. Focal length is 127 millimeters with a half millimeter diameter aperture for f254. The usable film diagonal, what I mean by that is here's your 5x7 film holder. Corner to corner is about 211 millimeters on 5x7 film holders. So your usable film diagonal is about 211 millimeters. The image circle projected by this camera's pinhole is 244 millimeters that's the usable high quality image circle. We're well within that and one of the things that tells you is you're going to have very even illumination across your frame. Angle of view is 81.3 degrees. On this side we have the bubble level and the sighting lines. Now with this camera I do tend to sight slightly inside of the lines but um, it, that's mostly just for my ability to crop an image if I feel the need to. And then on the bottom, we have another set of sighting lines and the tripod socket. Now, if you're shooting in landscape mode, you can use both sighting lines, the ones on the, the top and the ones on the bottom, to really get a good sense of what's going to be in your frame, as well as the landscape orientation sighting lines. This also allows you to crank the camera up above your head and look from the bottom of the camera along the sighting lines to see what's going to be in frame. And that's really useful if you're photographing something that's tall. On the back of the camera, we have our exposure calculator. Now, this is a pre-reciprocity failure exposure calculator, meaning that these times 
do not take reciprocity failure into account. I feel like it only goes up to 800 on the final Kickstarter ones. <laughs> um, at any rate, let's say that you are using a, uh, a 400 ISO HP5 Plus. In full sun, it's a half second exposure. Okay, that's really easy. But if you're using an ADOX CMS22 in full sun, that's 16 seconds. And we know that because everything from 100 ISO and slower is gonna be measured in seconds. Everything from four ISO and slower is measured in minutes. So if you're using CMS22, before reciprocity failure, you have a 16 second exposure, meaning that you're actually gonna be around a 50 second exposure, maybe a minute with your CMS22 in full sun to account for reciprocity failure. But what if you're using a J lane plate? You're at two minutes before reciprocity failure. So that's gonna be like a six minute exposure in full sun, four to six minute exposure, Prob probably six. I don't have the reciprocity failure for glass plates memorized. One ISO would be something like a very slow photobrome paper. So in full sun, four minutes before reciprocity failure. So this is what you're gonna do in full sun is you're going to take your film speed and then you're going to know what your base reading is before reciprocity for these slower speeds. Loading film is very easy in this camera. You're gonna grab your film holder. You're gonna open up the film back just a little bit. And then you're gonna slide the film holder in. Sometimes, like see caught, there we go. And the film holder is in. Now you're gonna verify that it's loaded correctly because this cutout here lets you see that the film holder is pressed up against the base of the camera. If it's pressed up against the base of the camera, you are loaded correctly. If there's a gap there, you are not loaded correctly and you will, lo and you will ruin your film when you take your shot. So always double check that the film holder is nested up against the bottom of the camera. One of the reasons that there's these long wings here is that it provides uh, light protection for the film when it's in the camera. Okay. To take your actual photo, what you're gonna do is you're gonna calculate your exposure time based on your lighting, your film speed, your reciprocity failure. You're gonna pull out your dark slide. Now, when you pull out your dark slide, this will hold your film holder in place. I am, admittedly, when I have actual film in these, a little bit paranoid, so I like to hold the film holder like this while I get the dark slide started. And that's how I pull the dark slide out. Because it's easier to do that than to lose a sheet of film. So you've got your dark slide out. You're gonna take your exposure. Just that simple. If you wanna do double exposures, that's cool. This is a double exposure machine. The best tool you can possibly have with you when you use this camera is going to be a preferably a chronograph watch but any watch that can keep track of minutes and seconds is fine. But if you're down here at a 20 ISO, 25 ISO film, or something like that, and you're running into 45 second to minute and a half long exposures, or longer if you're in a cloudy setting, you really are going to want something that will keep track of how many minutes have passed for you. So chronograph is just an easy and light way to do that. And that's, that's this camera. That is really, Everything about it. it is, it's, a very, it's a simple camera. It's made of seven millimeter thick bamboo. It's lined with felt to uh, eliminate um, internal reflections. And I really designed it to be enjoyable to use and simple to use and also reliable in terms of being able to deliver consistent and high quality images. So thank you very much for backing the campaign or buying it on Etsy or even buying it used and enjoying the camera. Any photos you take with your 57, feel free to share a link to them in the comments section of this video. I will look at all of them. I would be very excited to see the work that you guys do with your cameras. Have a good day. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. 
if you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos. And if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera. <laughs>